Dave Meltzer to join us on this show. Dave and I are actually on the same flight headed to Vegas, and we didn't plan it that way. It just sort of happened. We're flying out of the same airport, so it just worked out. Dave, what's up? Not too much. How you doing, Garrett? Good. So I think the first question on everybody's mind is, how are you with the Observer? And it doesn't sound like you jinxed yourself last night on Wrestling Observer Radio. Um, I, the screen froze. No, you're good. <laughs> oh, it did freeze. Okay, we'll we'll bring oh. Dave back when when uh, when he gets his screen right. Can you hear us, Dave? We really are live, pal. This is Let's a just live leave this frozen picture video out there for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he'll, and we'll he'll try and guess in. what Dave is thinking about. Well. Yeah, he'll be back in. You know, one of the things we're going to do with with uh, Dave is uh, I think we're going to get him a green screen because I think he's going to be doing a little bit more video for us. So we're, we're, we're uh, getting the, the video stuff. For, oh, there he is, Dave. So is. How you doing? Uh, everything's good with the Observer? <laughs> no, 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 everything's everything's great. Everything great. Nothing. Well, nothing's happened today that jinxed me, so we'll have to okay, wait. Good, good. good. So, uh, so you and I are flying out. Uh, we didn't plan it this way, but we're on the same flight on Friday. And I guess, you know, this whole thing uh, of everyone getting back to Vegas, we get to do another Q&A. You and Brian are back doing a Q&A, doing the whole convention again. Uh, I don't know if you know this or if you remember this, but one of the first times that you and I really connected was at one of these uh, conventions. And I think it, I want to say it was uh, Randy Savage had like passed away, like not too long before the convention. And we had this giant ballroom dinner, and I think there were prizes given away. And you walked yep, in. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. You walked in, and you kind of looked around, and I looked at you, and I just kind of waved, and then you just came right over, and you sat next to me, and we were we talked for like two hours. Like that was like I think the first time where yeah. I was like, oh we, yeah, we had a you know. yeah that we had a long conversation. Yeah, we met before. We met at the Pat yeah. Tillman run. Yeah. Yes. But that was the first time we had a long conversation, and um, and you started coming over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about the the uh, the Q and A that you and Brian are doing. Uh, these Q and As are you would think that you'd sort of get the same questions over and over and over and over again, but I, I've that I'm never, always that never happens. No, I'm always fascinated at how smart these questions are, and I guess I shouldn't be because it just means that you have a pretty smart audience. But uh, then you know, there's sometimes there's even a surprise. Last time we did it, uh, Chris Harrington showed up. Uh, I think yeah, we've had, yeah, uh, yeah, he had a really good question. He, yeah. was, he was very, he was very interesting. He was looking for, um, you know, ideas for international growth because that's where obviously the company's very far behind WWE when it comes to international growth. Yeah. Yeah. And then didn't, uh, there was one that we did in San Francisco. Uh, there was an ROH. Was it who, who showed up no, from it, ROH? It was, the, it was the, it was the new Japan show, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, the Young Bucks have come by. Joe Coff has come by. That's Maybe who you're was. talking about Maybe Joe Coff. Coff. Yeah, I think it was Joe Coff, Coff walked in in the middle of the thing, and you know, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we'll see. Maybe someone does a does a run in there, um, and then uh, also uh, the Q and A, or I'm sorry, not the Q and A, the meet and greet with you and Brian. So if people want to get their stuff signed or just get a picture with Dave and Brian, that uh, that will happen at the meet and greet. Okay, so that be, you that might, that might be sold. Is that sold out yet? I, I the last I thought I thought that one was sold out. Yeah, it might but, it might be sold out. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. so uh, you mentioned this on uh, Wrestling Observer Radio as well, which is early start for Rampage. So we're literally going to get in. We're going to put our bags down, probably get lunch, and we're already on the way to Rampage because it's, it's such an early start. Three thirty. Right. It's a, it's a three o'clock start for the show, and then Rampage itself will start at three. We'll run from three thirty to four thirty, which will either be live if uh, there's a Colorado Rockies uh, St. Louis Blues game, or it will be on tape um, if there is no hockey game, and it would then air at uh, ten o'clock Eastern, the normal time slot, and then the countdown will air after Rampage. Um, if there is no hockey game, if there is a hockey game, the countdown show will air after the hockey game. So that's the Friday schedule. There's two AEW shows Friday as far as TV yeah, goes. Do we know if, like, I mean, it's their last attempt. It's the go-home show to Double or Nothing. Do you expect anything big to happen on that Rampage show? Yes. 
I would expect something big to happen. I don't know. No one's told me it. I'm just thinking like, you know, it's not like I've talked to Tony Khan and he goes, oh, something big's going to happen. I, I, but I do kind of know Tony Khan's booking patterns and you're, you're going to do, you know, you're going to do something big in, in the final show. That's, you know, Wednesday and Friday. I'm sure that there'll be big promos, big, you know, it's going to be big hard sell Wednesday and Friday with um, stuff to build the pay-per-view. And is there any update on uh, the Paige Van Zant match that you, I think you said on Sunday that as far as people know, it's on the card, but uh, was there any update to that? I mean, I had heard over the weekend, um, cause I'd asked around about Paige and I was told, you know, she's going to be back soon, but people said, yeah, she's supposed to be in the, the mixed tag. And they've certainly hinted it on TV. It's the match that they want. And they said it was off. Then Sammy said, you're going to have to give me the match we want. I mean, it was the match planned. Um, if there was a snafu, um, you know, that happens, you know, maybe there, it's changed or maybe it'll be moved because they have so many matches on the show already. I don't know, but I know it was the match. I know that that match was planned for this pay-per-view. Yes. I wonder if anything gets moved to Friday, like when they sort of time out the show and go, oh, you know, maybe we'll just move this to Friday. You know how WWE does that with WrestleMania? WWE where... does that, but, but they, yeah. they've, never done, they've never done that. Now, they, they could move something to the following Wednesday, I suppose, mm -hmm. um, you know, because you want something big coming off of the pay-per-view. Um, so that's possible, but I don't recall them ever actually moving a match off the pay-per-view. They, You know, not saying that it will never happen, but they run a lot of pay-per-views and they've never done it yet, so... I don't, it's not like one of those things where I look at and go, oh, they can always do this. Whereas with WWE, you know, when it comes to WrestleMania, there's always timing issues at WrestleMania because they yeah. time it at the last minute. I think Tony doesn't, I think Tony has a better grasp of timing, honestly, than, than WWE does. That's the difference. Okay, so we're going to come back to Double or Nothing because I want to go through some of the matches and get both your and uh, Ian's thoughts on, on the card. But what's the story? I, I read somewhere where they were putting together... Uh, some timelines for The Rock, and, and someone had written that they think that Rock is fairly open in his movie production schedule for WrestleMania. What have you heard about that? Nothing new. I mean, same thing I always hear. You know, if he can do it, he'll do it. And um, no one knows, no one's probably going to know until late this year whether he can or he can't. But, I mean, it's sort of the, you know, kind of like the penciled idea of the main event, yeah. Because I was looking up, uh, he's got the Black Adam movie coming out. And I was kind of wondering with the release date, and it looks like it's going to be this fall, so that won't be an issue. But uh, you know, and then and then how how does the XFL play into this? You think? The, 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 the XFL, the, yeah. I mean, because he's going to have to train, he's going to have to run the football league. Um, that you know, I don't know. It's it's another thing on his plate, though. That's and pro, and a big thing too, you know, because it's starting what February, which yeah. is and it, and the season would be going and it'd be in the the you know. It'd be in the latter stages of the season or maybe the playoffs at that point. So, you know, it would be a big, that would be a big deal. And the XFL could be, you know, I don't know what, you know, two spring football leagues, you know what I mean? That's, and I, and again, and I just looked at the USFL ratings this morning and they're, uh, they're not that great to say. I've least. not watched one second of USFL football. And I was a giant fan of it when I was a kid. The I mean, the original USFL with all those college stars who who went to the USFL. Yeah, I haven't watched. I haven't watched a second of it. Just it's just hasn't yeah. even been on no, my the radar. Cable, the, the cable ratings are really weak. Um, the uh, NBC. I mean, the network ratings are weak for network ratings. But um, yeah, you know, I mean, they're they're you know they're they're you know they're they're they're, they're low. I mean, the uh, cable ratings are much 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 lower than than like NXT put it that way. I mean, not even in the same ballpark, like less than half. And then uh you know the the network numbers are you know, I mean they're still not not very good for network numbers. But there's a there's a vested interest with Fox, right? Because they Yeah, 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 they own the league and everything and they'll probably keep it alive and uh you know, again, when you think that the future is live sports, you're going to give the thing a chance to survive. You know, Vince, you know, whatever reason Vince was for bailing early, um, he didn't see a future in it. That was the thing. And Dwayne saw, you know, a chance. And I don't know, like, again, I'm surprised we don't know the, the ESPN deal um, numbers because obviously if it's successful or not, depends almost entirely on that ESPN deal. Um, if they got enough money for it, then they're, you know, whatever. Then he made the deal that, that WWE couldn't make because Vince was trying to get money for the, 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 the league um, for television, and he was turned down at, at by everyone. 
Um, then Dwayne comes in. If Dwayne got, you know, decent money for the league, you know, he made a deal Vince couldn't make. And, and that's the difference between success and failure. Yeah, I listened to John Oren's podcast from the Sports Business Journal, and I'm waiting for him to tweet something, to say something, because the, you know they, they definitely left that information out of that press release. Yeah, um, yeah. So one more thing about The Rock. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to think of you know him being able to tie in WWE to some of these other things that he's doing. Uh, XFL, um, the the Young Rock show. I'm not surprised that they picked that show up, but I watched some of those shows uh, on, on in that that were on the same time as uh, on NBC, and it was my least favorite one. I, I liked Mr. Mayor and the Keenan Show way better than Young Rock, but they picked up Young Rock. So, do you think there's going to be any any synergy with him coming back to WWE, Young Rock, the XFL? It would seem that. He could use, you know, part of the deal maybe, you know, if I'm going to come back to WWE, like that, that other stuff needs to be a big part of it. As far as them promoting his other things, well, first of right. all, the, the the Young Rock, uh, they will probably promote, but it's hard because Young Rock next season goes head to head with SmackDown. So it's kind of like that, that makes it real tricky. Um, as far as um, WWE promoting the XFL as, as a return for him doing it, I, I'm sure that they would. Um, I'm, I, I would suspect he would ask for it and I'm, and I can't imagine them not saying sure. All right. Ian and I were talking about some of these odds for double or nothing matches. And I'm kind of interested in what you think about CM Punk and Adam page. CM Punk is a minus 150. Adam page is a plus one ten. So very close to even odds. If you were to bet, who do you, who do you have winning this match? If I was to bet, I say Punk. If I was to book it, I would say I think I've talked about this before. I would have Page win the first one and Punk win the second one, you know, and make the second one enough of a dispute where you come back um, in Chicago, have the title win in Chicago, because um, Page would get a lot of credibility for a win, and you know Punk should be champion. But I think that I like it better um, with Page getting the first win. Um, just because Paige is the future of the company, not Punk. So you want to do something and then, you know, they can go one and one and and Punk could get then get his run because, you know, the Punk run where he wrestles Moxley and Danielson and, and Kenny Omega and uh, Paige again and, you know, other people. Um, you know, to me, that's a big money run as, as a champion. Um, but you want to keep, um, you, want to, you want Paige to be not, an, uh, you know, like a guy who who carried the belt, you know, between Omega and Punk, but a guy who, you know, is like a real champion who could win it at any time that, that they do it again. Um, enough of a, you know, I mean, even if he's losing, you know, really work on that finish hard with the idea that that he could have won. If Page wins the first one, when does Punk Page 2 take place? Do you wait to the next I mean, pay-per-view? If- do you do it before Forbidden Door? I would, I would for sure do it in Chicago if All Out is in Chicago. If All Out is not in Chicago, yeah. um, I would wait until, you know, then I would probably do Revolution in, or, um, yeah, re- you know, maybe Revolution in Chicago or Full Gear in Chicago. Whenever the next Chicago pay-per-view date is right. would be the date right. I would do it. And I think, I, I, I mean, again, the tradition is is All Out. He wants to keep tradition up. Um, so... But but you know they haven't confirmed all out for Chicago. But I'm if you go with the idea that it will be Chicago, that would be the show that I would have them win it at. And you would think that they would have to run the bigger building for that show, right? If if that's your main event. Uh yeah, I would think so too. I I don't think that there will be any um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, you you don't want the ill will of leaving the market, but I don't think that there will be an, and and the tradition. But I think if you move the tradition from um, the now arena to the United Center, um, especially since the company has grown um, and make the tradition the United Center. I don't think that anyone in Chicago is going to complain about, you know, well, we, you know what I mean? Like we have this tradition here and you ruined it. You know, it's it's still Chicago market. So, um, but yes, yes, if they do that, uh, I would say book the United Center too. All right, so looking at this card, uh, we're going to have so many different shows to kind of preview the matches and such. I'm kind of interested in in both of your 
uh, opinions on what the match of the night may be. Now, I was surprised to hear Brian Alvarez say he thought House of Black and Death Triangle could be the match of the night. N I'm not surprised because of, you know, I think that match is going to be good, but when you have Hangman and Punk uh, uh, on this show, I'm like, man, that the, for House of Black and Death Triangle to be better than that, that that's a high, high bar. Uh, but but Dave, what what do you think will be the best match on this show, or at least the one that has piqued your interest the most? The one, I mean, the, the main event would probably have my most interest, and it could be the best match because you know Punk is going to you know probably work the hard, you know as hard as he can, and and on, and Page is very very talented, and you got the high stakes. When I look on paper, I mean the two matches that I kind of think might be the best might be the 10 man anarchy match or the the the, the tag team title three way because I look at the tag team title three way and just the way those people match up now it may not have the interest level so it may not get the heat of the other ones but I look at those participants in the way that they match up and bounce off each other and things and I think that you could put together an incredible match because of the talent of the guys um the you know, the Young Bucks and Hardys, the Young Bucks are always in contention for a best match when it's on a pay-per-view. And the question is, is what do the Hardys have left? But um, but the uh, the other one, the, the Anarchy match, I mean, you got Moxley and Danielson and, you know, Eddie Kingston and, and Jericho's a, pretty much a genius when it comes to match layout. And, you know, I think that there's a lot, you know, when you have that kind of match, it'll either be unwieldy and too much because they don't rein it in. Or, or it will be an absolutely outstanding match because of the talent of enough of the guys in there. So those would be the other matches. Um, but I mean, I look at that show, and and most of the show uh, looks looks really, really, really good. And like the Death Triangle match um, should be, you know, a sensational match. They've already done it. We've already seen it once. It was great then. Without Phoenix, you add Phoenix to that match. That only is elevating the match. So I, I was uh, actually wondering about that anarchy match and i think i mentioned this to you on wrestling observer radio that's going to be a match that i'm going to have to go back and figure out to watch on television because live there i i imagine there's going to be several different things going on uh around the ring or outside you know and it's going to be i'm like i'm kind of anxious like going oh man what am i going to pay attention to like i'm going to miss stuff mm -hmm. but that may be a match that i just you know what i'm gonna have to go back and, and watch it on tv but do you think because of the fact that they have so much talent the way that they've created matches for this card is like a lot of multiple person matches you know there are 10 people in one match i i understand why but i kind of wonder like is this going to be what they have to do to get all of these people on these shows is you know less one-on-one -on -one matches except for the most important ones and then we're just sort of combining people into storylines that make sense but you know we just have to have all these multi-person matches so that we get all of these folks on tv yes well on the pay-per-view yes well look fdr's not on the pay-per-view you know and um so so yeah there's and and they've got two sets of tag team titles and they you know were were they, they've had some of the hottest matches um, you know, it, you know, that one week where they had those two great tag team matches. So it's like, you know, um, yeah, there, there's way too much talent for one pay-per-view. I mean, they're actually, and I'm not suggesting this. I don't think this is the right thing for them. Although at some point it may be where you do the, the WWE WrestleMania thing and you do the weekend where you do the Saturday and the Sunday pay-per-view, maybe for one of the pay-per-views a year. And then you really load up. I mean, cause they have a roster where you can pull that off better than WWE really when it comes to a roster to be able to do a deep show of great matches and um so that may be something down the road but yeah yeah i mean you're gonna have people you know that are top top guys not on the pay-per-view because there is so much talent on that roster i want to give uh, ian a chance to to ask a question uh yeah well okay so you mentioned that like ftr isn't going to be on the show but um I wanted to know what you think like we're going to see in terms of promoting the Forbidden Door pay-per-view for next month. Are we going to see some new Japan guys show up to help promote that show? You mean uh, surprise run-ins and stuff? I hope so. Um, yeah, something like that. Let me see. And they're really uh, good at that, that, right? <laughs> they, they're excellent. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, 
I, if in a perfect world, when that show is over, you should know two or three of the top matches for Forbidden Door. So yeah, like if Punk yeah, wins, yeah, should you know Tanahashi, Okada, Takagi, somebody you know walk on stage, Kenta maybe, yes, Kenta yeah. if it's you can, yeah, whatever, whatever. If Kenta's healthy, um, and if Paige wins, um, should somebody walk on stage yeah like a top new japan guy walk on stage at the end of the show absolutely 100 percent. i don't know if they've, they've worked that out but yes um and in the tag team situation should that happen um yeah i mean you should have um you know maybe after the 10-man tag somebody comes out and challenges danielson you know like zach or something mm -hmm. i mean i don't know but whatever matches they have lined up they should have like the top three or four of them teased on the pay-per-view i mean if if it's at all possible and and i mean they absolutely should do that yes yeah yeah uh, you, the you other thing was uh uh sorry no, go ahead. we saw kind of an angle there with uh fish and o'reilly and sting and darby allen is there anything maybe listed for them being added to the show uh no but that's another one you know you, you got right now you have no darby allen match uh you have no uh, yeah. Fish and o'reilly match Unless unless O'Reilly ends up uh, in the finals of the Owen Hart thing, but obviously that match will happen and probably on TV. I don't I don't see it on Forbidden Door and and going to uh, um, All Out seems to be too long. So I think that that maybe maybe yeah. that's building for a, a television match. All right. So business indicators for this show, how well we think this show is going to do. Obviously the sort of the peak was what was all out like the, when it came to interest and all of the surprises kind of bubbling at the right time but uh do you still feel like they're at the point in pay-per-view where you know growth and and we don't have really a great comparison to to last year because that was still uh i think that was the first show out of the pandemic right where they finally were able to have uh, the live fans there at the outdoor, uh, the outdoor place. But do you have any sense of, you know, where you expect this show to be pay-per-view, uh, pay-per-view buys wise? Um, some of it depends on, um, if there's an NBA game on that day, cause that would hurt if there, if there is, but, um, I mean, I kind of feel about the same as the last one, you know, which was 170, which was a good number. Um, so I guess if I'm going to guess, you know, I, I last the last one was so great on paper and, and ended up being so great as far as match quality goes. But this one does have a pretty strong main event. I mean, granted, you know, Punk and MJF was a big grudge, but this is Punk going for the championship. So, again, I, I feel it should be as strong as the last one. Maybe it'll even be stronger. But but my gut is, yeah, if you're going to ask me like a number, I'm going to guess 170. And then what was the last show? 170. Okay. And then what was all out? Um, 205. Okay. So, I mean, that's, that's still a very, very strong number.